Hi, my name is Steve Simpson. I'm an illustrator and graphic designer. And today I'm going to show you how to make illustrated barcodes using Affinity Designer. About 10 years ago, I was approached by a new client, Mixed Chili. It was a brand new product. There was no branding, no logos, no colors. Um, everything was new. So I thought, took this as an opportunity to try something new. Up until that point, I've been working both as an illustrator and a graphic designer. My graphic design was very much grid-based using fonts. My illustration was very wonky. The two things never really seemed to me to actually gel together properly. And so what I decided to do on this one was to try to forget about the graphic design and just approach this as one big illustration. It was just going to be wrapped around a bottle. So I was going to um, hand letter as much of it as I could. And that way, my illustrations and my lettering would combine together. So this went very well. I was very pleased with how it turned out. But the one thing on the bottle that really stood out as looking like it had been done by a graphic designer rather than an illustrator was the barcode. So it was then I start trying to figure out ways to soften the barcode to try to make it feel more illustrated and trying to get it fit more within the branding that I've been creating for Mixed Chili. By extending the bars and adding bones and skulls, I managed to make the barcodes quirky and fitting with the rest of the illustration. The packaging was a success. It was featured in the industry magazines. It won several awards. And over the past 10 years, I've continued to work with Mick, expanding the range and still using illustrated barcodes Okay, so we're looking at a standard barcode. Along the bottom we have a number string, and then we have the black bars that run along the top. Now when a barcode reader is reading this, it's actually reading the white spaces between the bars. And that's reflecting light back into the barcode reader, which is then telling it which product you're actually looking at. For a barcode reader to actually recognize the barcode, what it needs is a quarter inch a quiet zone that's left empty so that it knows when the barcode starts and when the barcode finishes. So if you're applying it to packaging, then always leave that bit of a gap at the start and at the begin at the end. Also, it needs an uninterrupted strip a barcode to read. So it needs to be able to know when the start and when the finish is a full strip. What happens above that and even below it can be whatever you want, so long as there's a full in uninterrupted strip. Now, the number string along the bottom, now th that is purely there for the human reader. So the font can change on that. There doesn't need to be gaps. Okay, so that can be any font you want. And what I tend to do is use a font that I'm already using within the packaging design itself, just so that it ties it in a little better. But I suppose it could also be uh, hand numbered. So long as the numbers are clear, that's all that really matters. Another note is that when you're illustrating a barcode, you don't want to disguise the barcode too much because you still want people to instantly recognize it as a barcode. I mean, if you are standing and self-scanning at a till, you want to find that barcode pretty fast. So for me, I, t I tend to leave enough of the barcode there uh, so that you recognize it's a barcode straight away. There are two types of illustrated barcode. The first is a template where you create a single illustration and different barcodes are dropped over the top of it. So this is useful when you've got a whole range of products, but you're only going to use one illustrated barcode. The second type is more bespoke and it uses the bars themselves to create the actual illustration. And in this case, you can only use that particular illustration with that particular barcode. So the first one we're looking at is creating the masked version. So, what I'm going to start off by doing is uh, just creating a mask that I'm just going to fit over the top of, of the barcodes themselves. Okay, so now I've masked off the barcode, so it's clean along the top and along the bottom. 
and I think I'll just bring that down a little bit so it's not quite as big. Just give me a little bit more space to play around with at the top. And the second thing I'm going to do is just look at the number string along the bottom. I'm just going to take out the gaps and I'll remove this as well. Okay, so, so now we have the number string along the bottom. And the first thing, once I've done that, I'm just going to change the font. Um, Let's just pick something simple. So American typewriter has gone in there. One of the things I do like to do is when I'm looking at the font to actually give it enough um, space between each letter. So if I go into positioning and uh, tracking, then I can just widen that out. I think that just adds to the readability of it with if somebody's actually going to copy it onto a machine. So we'll just stick that in there. Um, so then when it comes to illustrating the actual barcode itself, uh, what I'm going to do here is just create a silhouette of a city. So that's going to run just along the top. Let's get rid of that outline. And um, so this is just a really quick one. It's going to make some buildings vary in size. So let's just uh, make these a bit more interesting. Just uh, vary the height on them. Just give them a bit of shape. And so you get the idea. So go into a lot more detail. You put windows in there if you want. Maybe um, we can add um, sort of the moon. I think there's a crescent moon here. Isn't there? So what about uh we got the stars? There we go. Let's give it a tail. There we go. So this that's a standard template type barcode really not interrupting with the um, the bars themselves and then that can be placed over lots of different types of barcode and it's not going to make um, any extra work for you. So talking about color, the scanner uses a red light or an infrared light which means that it won't be able to see yellows oranges and reds. Good colors, uh, obviously black, high contrast, blue is good, and then a dark color, something that's got a high percentage of black in it. We want to avoid using tones of colors that are quite low in contrast, so anything pastel is going to be difficult to read. Um, background colors, uh, an off-white is, is fine, so long as there's a good contrast. Uh, I suppose you could also use yellow and red, which would the scanner would see as white. Okay, so now we're going to look at a more bespoke uh, version. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to um, make sure I've got a straight line along the bottom. So rather than masking it this time, I'm actually going to select all the bars and combine them together by adding them. Um, I then want to just give myself a straight edge along the bottom there. So I'm just going to subtract that. So now I just have the one layer with all the barcodes on it and they're completely straight. Just going to drop in my uh, number string along the bottom. Now, 
what I'm able to do now is to take each one of these. So by selecting these, I can then extend them to whatever length I want. Okay, so I'm not going to do that quite yet. The first thing I want to do is I've done a little sketch here. So I'm sticking with houses, but this time I'm going to uh, use uh, the bars of the barcode to make the house itself. Okay, so this is going to take a little while. Um, so the first thing I want to do is to reduce the size of the actual bars themselves, just to bring them down a little bit. So I just bring that down there. So let's bring it down to the bottom. I want this line here to extend all the way to the top of the house. So I'm keeping my finger held down on the screen so that the line stays straight. Okay, so that's the edge of my house. Um, and then on the other side, I'm going to do exactly the same. Select those two nodes. Bring them right up there. Okay, so now I have the two outside. I keep redoing this. Find the outside lines of my house. So I have a tree here. Add that there. Another tree here. So this one's going to have to be a fatter tree inside part of the house there. That's this one here. I want to use some of these lines here for this wall that's in front of it. So I'm going to select all of these. Need this one to be quite as tall. I can go down to there. So, and to mask these off, I'm just going to use white. So, yeah, and the roof again is going to be white.
I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I think there's never an excuse why not to illustrate a barcode, whether it's for a, um, a jar of honey in maybe a couple of hives and a couple of bees. Um, maybe it's a bottle of wine and it's the vineyard or something. Um, I think it's always nice just to include something. It can be really simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. So I hope this has given you some sort of insight on uh, how easily it can be done. Many thanks to Affinity for putting this together. If you get a chance, please subscribe to my channel. Also, there are a lot more examples as well on my website, stevesimpson.com. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Please stay safe and take care. Thanks. Goodbye.